Good morning, good morning, my brothers and my sisters. Welcome to the Church Town Church of God. We are walking in May 12th. What are you doing for Mother's Day? Maybe you don't go to church all the time. Bring your kids and come to church. It's going to be fun on May 12th. Well, it's always fun around here. And tonight, end of the spear. No charge. Why would we charge? Come on in. 7 p.m., end of the spear. Movie night. First Friday movie night. And the Church Town Church of God has gotten the rights to show season four of The Chosen. And that will be every other Friday night in May. Two episodes per evening. If that's something that you're into, you just show up. Or you can send me a message and I'll give you more information. But good morning, good morning. I want to welcome you all inside the church. This is what it looks like if you're sitting in the back row. There it is, sitting in the back row. That's what it looks like. It's so pretty, isn't it? Very very traditional, very pretty. I just love this place so much. Love these old pews. Talk about hurricane proof. Awesome stuff. But as we say around here, we are traditional, but not old fashioned. There's some wonderful instrumentation right there. There it is. And all of our technology over here so that we can live stream, so that we can be heard without screaming in the church. Good acoustics and good microphone. So let's make our way up here, shall we? You, you can see what I see. Good morning, Sandy. And this is what you'll see if you're singing in the choir, which we hardly ever stand here to sing, but we do stand here to play. Here's music for this weekend. If you know the fiddler, the fiddler will be playing this weekend. The fiddler and his friends, two guitars and a violin. Our dear Jeff and Steph are taking some time away, much deserved time away. So let me get you all set up there and I will sit down here and we will begin our conversation. Look, you're a little crooked. Why are you crooked today? Huh? You weren't crooked on Tuesday. What, did you become a politician? Ha, 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 That's just a joke. Well, not really. Politicians, man. God, they, you know, you got to sell your soul to be a politician. Am I right? Am I wrong? I guess there are a few that haven't. But my goodness, they are in the minority. I had a good conversation about politics and church. You know, and where do I land on all preaching politics in church? And we've talked about this before. There are political bureaucratic issues like social justice type stuff and paying off student loans and things. They don't belong in a church. I mean, okay, you've got your own political views on that. You've got your own socioeconomic views on that. You do your research. You vote accordingly if this person is going to. A vote for something that you don't like, whatever. But there are issues, there are political issues that are also biblical issues. Like the sanctity of marriage between a man and a woman, right? Like the realization that we are sons and daughters of the Most High God. Like the realization of the sanctity of life from conception, i.e. the humanity of Jesus Christ. So there are things that cross over that, of course, I'm going to speak about. Because they are biblical teachings. Does that make sense? So it's not like you, you know, it's not, you know, you have churches that are just all in on politics and, and social justice and this program and that program and this politician, and that politician, that, no. But there are crossover issues. Good morning, Brittany. There are crossover issues that are biblical issues, like the three that I just mentioned. That's where we stand as Christians. You can't escape that. So I'm all of that to say I'm looking for Philippians. First and second Corinthians. Do you know your song? I didn't get it prepared in advance because it's so beautiful. I was walking Susie this morning and we took a little extra long walk. It was so nice outside. Just, oh, the air is light, you know, not yet so humid. 
but warm and the sun is beaming and I cannot wait to get out there today and do some serious weed whacking and mowing and just be outside. Ooh, 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 there it is. Philippians 4, a very unfamiliar scripture, I'm sure. Let's pray. Father, we do pray that your word will go out today because we know it will not come back void. It will serve every purpose that you have for it. May the truth be heard throughout the world. May hearts be warmed. May necks be turned. May eyes be cast up to you and may your kingdom grow in Jesus' name. Amen. That's our whole purpose here. Good morning, Rosie. Good, but it's, it's showing that like lots of like a bunch of people are watching, but only one is showing up there. So if you're watching, if you can get to a thumbs up, because I'm I'm trying to figure this out. You you know what we did figure out finally. Thank shout out Mark Cole. You've been tagged. You're always tagged. There we go. You got one thumb, two thumbs. So that's so it's not. You, there's a bunch of folks here that it's showing, and only the number one up top. There's three, four. Okay, see? Okay. Good old Facebook. Just trying to figure it out. But you see that we got podcasts up now. If you search Apple Podcasts or Spotify for turning on the lights, you'll find it. Mark Cole, shout out, is converting turning on the lights to podcast and also Church Town Church of God sermons. He's cutting out the music and so forth and going to the sermons and the teaching. So you can search Church Town Church of God sermons and you'll find that and that's live on apple and spotify huh download right rate it review it all of that stuff let people know see we've been praying around here haven't we we've been praying like lord take what's happening here take this teaching and send it and all of us you know not all of a sudden sure it's just coincidence we have the capability of sending it hmm it's like we made a focus on how do we welcome families? How do we welcome children? This is when only my children or my grandchildren were a part of the church. Now there's a bunch, right, Britt? Here in come Brittany and Sean and, and Willow. And we're like, oh, the Lord was waiting for us to be able to care for folks. And I believe we have been obedient. So it's pretty cool. Pretty cool to see him working. Uh, it's pretty amazing to be a part of that. Let's read Philippians 4. Now I appeal to Judea and Syntech, please, because you belong to the Lord, settle your disagreement. And I ask you, my true partner, to help these two women, for they worked hard with me in telling others the good news. What? Okay, I'm not going to get into the whole women in ministry thing or the, but we, you, the folks who are like, it very clearly says that women should be quiet. It very clearly says that no woman will have authority over a man. Does it? It very clearly says that these two women were working with Paul, sharing the good news. So all I'm saying is that these are things that we need to wrestle with, aren't they? We as human beings like to cut and dry, baby. I want it black or white. I want no gray area. I don't want to wrestle with scripture at all. But you got to wrestle with scripture. Because in the very the very in the in Corinthians when he says I will women should be silent and submissive in church and if they have questions they can ask their husbands. And then two paragraphs later it's like when women prophesy, good morning. When women prophesy, they should prophesy with and I go, okay, wait a minute, what is it? They should be quiet and ask questions, or they should speak in church. And prophesy means that you are speaking the word of God. Now, in our day and age, right, it means like me. We are speaking the word of God. I am not a prophet. The office of prophet is done. But there is a gift of prophetical speaking. You I'm getting off into the weeds already. <clears throat> Pardon me. That's another byproduct, of course, of this beautiful, wonderful day. And all of these wonderful, beautiful maple trees. My gray car is now yellow. And <clears throat> an extra long walk with Susie this morning. Put it in there. Good morning, Mary. That's not what I came here to talk about. I'm just saying 
there, I was teaching actually at, at Cardinal Christian Academy on, Academy on Monday, and one of the courses, there were two courses of apologetics. And so the questions that the teacher had were <clears throat> wonderful, and I taught them what I believe. Why? Because they were, they were solving apparent contradictions on their own using <clears throat> resources that they had available. They did an excellent job. And I said, so why do you think it looks this way? Why do you think that we have to wrestle with such things? And, you know, well, I, I don't know. And I said, well, the book is constructed this way intentionally. We're not sitting around 2,000 years later wrestling with the Odyssey. Well, what do you think Homer meant when he wrote this verse as opposed to this verse? But we are sitting around 2,000 years later on the daily in deep discussion, learning, growing, becoming through wrestling with Scripture. Coincidence, I'm sure, right? This is our new favorite saying around here. But that's why. Because now we're going to go in and we're going to examine all of the different things from human sexuality to the moment of conception, when a person becomes a person, Jesus Christ, to the roles of women and men in formal vocational ministry, to the offices that people are claiming they're walking around as prophets and apostles today, okay? All of that just from, right? So settle your disagreement, and I ask you, my true partner, to help these two women, for they worked hard with me in telling others the good news. They worked along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are written in the book of life. There you are, written in the book of life. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. This is what we're always talking about, right? The basic fruits of the Spirit. There are fruits of the Spirit that are listed, and we can all sing the song and recite them. But when we talk about the human understanding of peace, joy, love, right? Hope. When we talk about the human understanding of what it means to suffer, we can, we can go beyond because we have been spiritually lifted. We have been spiritually made alive in Christ. And we have, we have a larger understanding of these things. These things are not, in fact, contingent upon our circumstances. And this is the beauty of the Christian. This is the power of Christian testimony. They are not contingent upon your circumstances. They are gifted to you by the Lord Jesus Christ. So your joy, you're running around and your circumstances are just deteriorating. Fill in the blanks yourselves. We've all been there. But your joy cannot be snatched from you because you are in relationship with the Holy God through Jesus Christ, the Son. You are indwelled by God's Holy Spirit. Woo. And you're going to tell me that your circumstances or the lies of the enemy or whatever can snatch that away from you? Then I would say, where is your trust? I would use the words of Jesus Christ as he says many times, you of little faith. And, and, and it, it is not a condemnation so much as it truly is an encouragement because this is, the, as I wrote in the Churchtown Weekly, this is the most difficult aspect of faith, is faith itself, is trust. It is when you let go. No, of course, that's not to say you just, okay, whatever, God, just go ahead. I, I'm doing nothing. No, God guides a moving ship to be sure. 
but we seek his will through his word and in prayer and through conversation. And we put one foot in front of the other and our joy, our happiness, our, our peace is not contingent upon the circumstances of this world. We move through the circumstances of this world with the hope and the joy and the love and the peace and the understanding of suffering that comes from the Lord. So it is important. Good morning, Liz. It is important to understand, not just understand that, but to live in that power and trust. And you say, but, 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 but how can I be happy? This and that and the other thing has happened. I've. I've received this diagnosis or my best friend, this or my mom or my dad or whatever the circumstances may be. Lean into God's Holy Spirit. Lean into God's Holy Spirit. Go in prayer and supplication. Open scripture and read something encouraging like this and say, Lord, speak. I want to know you more deeply and richly that this is how you will come to know yourself. And that's where we kind of get it twisted. If you listen to a lot of sermons, you will hear you will be happier. You will be powerful. You will be healed. What's the subject of all of those sentences? You. The subject of scripture is not you. The subject of scripture is God. You are created in the image of God. If you want to learn more about you, learn more about God. If we flip that script and I'm telling you are this and you are that and you are this and you are that, then I project that onto God. It works the other way. Wow. God is like me. No. You are made like him. So if you want to know you, know him. And this is why we have, this is why 2,000 years later on the daily and very deeply, we are wrestling with scripture. I love it. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing, then the God of peace will be with you. Who is in charge of your thoughts? You are. And more than one time, scripture teaches us to capture our thoughts and guide them in a different direction. If you don't want to think about something, you can think about something else. Now, we talk about invasive thoughts and all of those things, and we know that, that uh, Satan plays with human psychology and you can get in on these loops and all of that stuff. And hey, maybe Christian counseling is the way to go. Maybe there is some sort of imbalance. Be careful with all that stuff, but maybe some medication can help. Those sorts of things are fine. But you can capture your thoughts and redirect them. I always teach my grandchildren, just as I taught my children and the, the children that I served at school. You are also in charge of your emotions. No way. Yes way. One of the things I really dislike hearing is, you made me feel. Nobody can make you feel anything. There is a situation and you're choosing to react or feel in a certain way. When you can begin to shift your paradigm in the way that you think about these things and the way that you understand your feelings and your emotions and your reactions and your behaviors, of course, and understand that you are choosing them. It may be a repetitive loop that you do so without thinking, so to speak, cause and effect in your behavior or your thoughts, but you are in charge of them. So capture those thoughts, redirect them to what is good, right? Just like you can be in charge of what you watch and what you listen to. Garbage in, garbage out. Good stuff in, huh? good stuff out. So Paul is just, you know, 
How I praise the Lord that you are concerned about me again. I know you have always been concerned for me, but you didn't have the chance to help me. Now that I was, not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Even so, you have done well to share with me in my present difficulty. So there is the famous verse, but also there is the full context. Now, this may be a nice verse to go through your head in a particular circumstance or when something drastic has been asked of you. I'm not going to say, hey, that's wrong thinking there. But understand the scriptures aren't addressing that per se. Paul is addressing life. And the abundance that we may experience, the little that we may experience, the riches, the poorness, the health, the illness. He's addressing life. And I can do and I can move through life. Through Christ who strengthens me. Through the power of God within me. So like I said, you know, it, it, but if you believe that verse, okay, that gives you some sort of superpower in situations, that's wrong thinking. If, you, if that verse goes through your head every once in a while when you are in an intense situation, okay. But understand that that verse is really faith and trust dependent. You can't just move through life and then something happens. Now you call upon the Lord. When he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, all means all. It means all of everyday life. All of the good, the bad, the ugly, the wonderful, the terrible, the rich, the poor, all of that. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me because he is with me 24-7, 365. So I wanted to speak about that. That verse is faith and trust dependent. And when you can have that faith and trust, you can experience what Paul is speaking about in Philippians 4. And that verse will have real, deep, rich meaning. And you can stop pulling it out of scripture and wielding it like some sort of a weapon or tool. And understand that is truly the big picture of life. The love, the peace, the hope, the joy, the understanding of suffering. The bigger picture that we are given by the power of God's Holy Spirit. Right? That, that, is, that is living well. As the kids say, I am a Joe, in my humble opinion, that is living well. That is living life and living life to the full. Whether you have a little or whether you, whether you have little or whether you have a lot, whether you have great health or whether you have ill health, whether your circumstances are just cranking and everything is great or whether your circumstances and your whole world seem to be crashing down around you. I can do all things in all situations, in all circumstances, through Christ who strengthens me. Big picture, not little picture, not the event that's happening now. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Big picture. Because you, as a repentant soul, are a child of the Most High. Father, we pray your word will indeed bless people this day. However they may find it, wherever this may pop up, Lord, I pray that any words of encouragement that are provided here will be provided for the individuals who need them most. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, kids, it's Friday, so you know what I'm gonna say. Sunday's coming. We got a good one. We got a good one. It's a lot of fun because, like I said, we got the fiddler and his friends this weekend. You know, there'll be a fiddle and two guitars. 
uh, violin. See, now when, when Liam plays the prelude, and he, I always joke with him with this, when he, when he pr plays what I call, are you going to play one of those pieces I can't pronounce? So when, <laughs> when he plays one of those pieces I can't pronounce, that's the violin. Oh, he's good. But when he gets down to power in the blood, because we're doing there's power in the blood, is one of Mackenzie's favorite songs. She's coming up to help sing it. Then he's a fiddle. And it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And it's going to be really neat with the new sound system and everybody will be able to blend. And so I'm very excited. And we're preaching out of 1 John. Spiritual warfare, baby. And in essence, how to be content in all things. So it's, I'm looking forward to Sunday. I hope you are too, wherever you are. Go to church. It's important.